hey, if you've been on the internet for any time at all, you've probably heard of these guys, Rhett McLaughlin and Link Neal. They've been making videos since the very creation of YouTube. Now they have millions of subscribers, millions of dollars, and all of this. So in this video, we're going to see what we can learn from the creators of the mythical empire and improve our own content. Let's go! You probably already know a lot about these guys, so let's just skip right to their first ever piece of content that they created together. The two met in 1984, the date they started first grade at Bowie's Creek Elementary School. A while later, at age 14, they wrote a screenplay and began shooting a film based on it. They also shot a short film in high school that showed their love for comedy, writing, and acting at a pretty young age. But after high school in the late 90s, they both went to university to study engineering, and quickly after that, started working as engineers. But shortly after that, they quit their high-paying engineering jobs to start working for a Christian evangelist group, making videos full-time. Eventually, they decided that wasn't for them, and right around the same time, they uploaded their first piece of content to YouTube. Watch this clip, it's really cool to see where they started out. We're uh, gonna attempt to lift and then drop a giant boulder into this dam. One, two, three. Obviously, it's not the greatest video in the world. But directly after that, they started to upload songs and skits and formed their signature comedy style that slowly started building their audience into the massive community it is today. I think the first thing that we should learn from these guys is that shifting gears and leaving behind old parts of your life to follow your dreams is a really good idea. In Rhett and Link's case, it was leaving their jobs as engineers to start a evangelist Christian lifestyle, and eventually leaving that lifestyle behind for what they have today. But for your average Joe, that might just mean changing majors, career paths, or ambitions to create the content that you really want to make. That's one thing we can learn from Rhett and Link to improve our content. But is there more? Rhett and Link might literally hold the title for the most consistent YouTubers of all time. From that first upload in 2006, all up into the time that I'm making this video in 2023, they've been uploading content. There's a lot we can learn from Rhett and Link's consistency over the years. Rhett and Link have been uploading videos to their channel Good Mythical Morning every weekday for over 10 years. This consistency allows them to build a loyal fan base that knows when they're going to upload and what they're going to upload. By consistently producing new content, they've been able to grow their audience and keep their existing viewers engaged. There's this concept called the 10,000 hour rule, which suggests that it takes approximately 10,000 hours of deliberate practice to become an expert or master in a particular field or skill. If we apply the 10,000 hour rule to Rhett and Link, we can see that they obviously put a lot of time and effort into their content creation over the years. They've been creating content for over three decades together. That's thousands of hours of practice and refinement. Now, I don't expect us all to be uploading every single day for 10 years straight, that's insane. But I do think that there's something valuable in setting a really strict schedule for ourselves and seeing if we can stick to it. For instance, you might really benefit by not overthinking or over-polishing your content. Rhett and Link, for instance, have created pretty much every single episode of GMM from the exact same spot with the exact same set. So I think that teaches us that it's actually sometimes okay to sacrifice the quality of your video for the quantity when it comes to online content. For instance, using the same set every time allows them to create a lot of content, so they never run out. And they basically flood the internet with their faces every single week. But the crazy thing is, Good Mythical Morning is far from the only thing these two have created over the years. The Rhett and Link rabbit hole goes a lot deeper. It's possible that over the years of Rhett and Link's content creation that they've made literally every type of art. They have multiple albums, singles, and music videos, and went on tour. They've written multiple books, including one that made number 13 on the New York Times bestseller list, multiple podcasts, television shows, grooming products, clothing, kitchen accessories, and multiple other YouTube channels they successfully run, like the super popular Smosh channel they recently acquired. 
Huh, okay, so maybe that leaves out sculpting and maybe origami, but I wouldn't put that past them either. So why do I bring all this up? Is it to make us feel bad that we don't create as much content as Red and Link? No, it's the opposite actually. I think it should be exciting for us. Although insanely talented, Rhett and Link are not superhuman. In fact, they talk about their completely human struggles all the time. Dealing with failure and rejection is truly how Rhett and Link made it so far. You can't create hundreds of successful projects without creating hundreds of unsuccessful ones, no matter how good you are. It seems like nothing is perfect for people with 10 subscribers or 10 million subscribers. This idea is talked about a lot in their weekly podcast called Ear Biscuits. So I learned from Red and Link that I should branch out with my art forms to truly improve my content. Even if I completely f up most of them. Improving my art in multiple ways, one step at a time. Let me leave you with one more clip that I really like of Red and Link talking about their journey. If you put something out into the world and nobody notices or cares, there's freedom in that. There's freedom that we don't have because everything we do because of our success has a level of scrutiny. If you're a developing artist and you do something that doesn't work, you can focus on the freedom to then try something new and, and not be under the thumb of people's expectations. There's a way to redeem every failure or every rejection. You can always see it as an opportunity if you want to. 